a little bit more up. Uh, no, uh, just just take the position you're going to take. Well, like this. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. I hope the reception is good. We have a very nice man here who is lacking uh, the teeth on the right side. Имаме един много приятен господин, който, на който му лисат зъби от ясната страна на горната челюст. And you can see how the situation is. We have a very accentuated alveolar ridge. Виждате как изглежда ситуацията в устата. Имаме един много добре изразен алвеоларен ръб. But at the end of surgery we can show them the uh, uh, computer tomography slides. Но след хирургична интервенция може да ви покажем uh, компютър томографските срезове. The distance from the alveolar crest to the sinus maxillaris on the right side is approximately 5 millimeters. Че отстоянието между алвеоларния гребен и maxillaris sinus е около 5 мм. Which actually is not enough uh, for putting implants. Което по принцип не е достатъчно за да поставяне на импланти. So, um, since we are going so the plan right now is that we are going to put three implants on this side. Трябва да поставим три импланта в този този участък. Simultaneously to a prior intralift procedure. Едновременно с предхожаща интралист процедура. So, first we will do our mucoperiosteal incision. Започваме с инцизия на мукозата и подлежащия периост. We make a horizontal incision on the alveolar crest. Правим един хоризонтален разрез върху алвеоларния ръб. А долор? Anything? Не знам. Усещаш ли нещо? Не. Okay, then we proceed with the incision distally. След това продължаваме инцизията дистално. And the reason why I'm not doing an incision in the middle of the alveolar crest и причината поради която не правя инцизия по средата на валарния ръб It's very simple because I'm a fan of implants that heal in totally covered. Защото в лечебния план са включени е включено поставянето на импланти, които искам да покрия напълно. So the incisions always have to be very precise. Инцизията винаги трябва да е много точна. In order to remove the periosteum completely from the bone. За да може след това да отстраним периоста напълно от коста. Okay. Now we are opening the flap. Сега започваме от препаринето на ламбото. So we take a short measurement. Но все пак достатъчно за ширина за поставяне на импланти. Изневаме. The width of the bone is exactly 7.89 mm. Ширината на коста е точно 7.8 mm. And this is sufficient for an immediately placement of an implant. А такава ширина на коста е достатъчна за и на запазното поставяне на имплант. So, second, we want to already mark the position of the future implants. На втори етап ние вече ще маркираме позицията на бъдещите импланти. So, I'm using the Q implant system. Използвам системата Q. It's a German implant system. Тя е една германска система. Which is very successful all over the world. Която има успех на всякъде по света. And we do always trainings for these systems for European doctors. И също така ние провеждаме обучение за тази система на за болекарите. In Cuba and Vientiane, Laos. Също така обучение провеждаме в Куба и в Лаос. And in the last six years we put more than 50,000 implants. И през последните години, през последните 6 години ние сме поставили над 50 000 импланта. So this is what I call the marker drill. И това е борчето, което аз наричам маркиращо борче, маркираща преза. 
It's very slow turning. Върти се много бавно. So this is not very crucial because this is going to be the place where we are doing the intro. Това не е чак такова критично значение, тъй като това е от много критично значение, всъщност защото това е местото, където ще правим интервюта. It is I was uh, explaining in the workshop как те обясних в uh, курса, който проведахме, to speed up the entire procedure, за да ускорим цялата процедура. We do the primary approach to the sinus with the conventional drills of the implant system. Правим първоначалния подход към синуса с конвенционалните дрилове за имплантологичната система. So, now we are going to switch over to the piezotome. Сега ще преминем към работа с пиезотома. And we start to attach the working tip number one. И започваме с присъединяване на първият работен на крайник. So before we start the procedure, we always have to check if the water irrigation works. Винаги преди да започнем процедурата, трябва да проверим дали добре работи охлаждането. And now we place the pilot drill TKW1. И сега поставяме пилотната пилотния дръг TKW1. And activate. И го активираме. Okay, and you always have a very, very good feedback because because when I touch slightly, I still feel bold. So, we don't have any pressure. I go in. And as you can see by the marking, the computer tomography doesn't always tell the truth what refers to size. И както виждате по маркировъчните тръгове на инструмента, не винаги може да съди със точните размери на пръста върху компютърната томография. Може би водата е малко повече в този случай. So I reduced it now to 60 ml instead of 80. И сега намалявам на 60 ml за минута вместо до 80. And astonishingly, there is much more gold than we could have expected. Всъщност очудващо е, че имаме много повече кост, колкото може да очакваме. So step number two. Минаваме към стъпка номер две. We take the next TKW tip, the TKW two. Взимаме следващия на крани от последователността. Номер два е TKW две.
and we proceed with the preparation. We enlarge it. И продължаваме с препарирането, като разширяваме. Okay, and if you hold the hand piece like this, and you don't use pressure, you will feel immediately that you uh, make a trepanation of the uh, sinus floor, and you also feel the elasticity of the membrane. And ако ако държите съвсем леко на тънечника, без да упражнявате никакво никакъв натиск в в, в в коронарна посока върху на тънечника. Вие много лесно може да усетите в кой момент се достигне до синусната мембрана, по нейната еластичност. Then comes TKW3. We enlarge the trepanation to 2.6 mm. След това идва следващия на край, номер 3, с който разширяваме отпор до 3,5 mm. And to be more precise and to see more I will just remove some of adhering soft tissue. И за да бъдем по-прецизни, за да виждате по-добре, аз ще премахна част от мекто степен. Much water is soon over. Now we please. Now we should stand up. The hour to stop and look back. So now we sit down. Tell him I feel with him. I have got the same problem. Doctor Tradan, this is just for the study. Let him also check it out. Let him go and test the procedure. And three, two months ago, I had the same procedure, but on the on the same side. So if I'm asking about the same procedure, what's the problem? But I was in full anesthesia. No, no, no. I pretend I'm in full anesthesia. Okay. Now we finish with the last TKW tip, the TKW four. You see from the shape, it's flat. Продължаваме с следващия на край. Виждаме, че той е плосък. Because if you got impatient until now, the danger to perforate the membrane is very high with the last trepanation. So it is flat to prevent perforation. И той е създаден за тези, които са били нетърпеливи, защото по принцип е висок риска за перфориране на синусовата мембрана с предишните инструменти. С този инструмент за това е плосък, за да може по-трудно да се перфорира синусовата мембрана. Okay, so I will just take shortly the mirror because I want to see. Сега ще взема за кратко погледалство, за да мога да видя. If we can see the membrane. Дали може да видим синуса на мембрана. But for this we would need a video endoscope to show. Но за да може да го видите на екрана, всъщност ще трябва да има нужда от ендоскоп. So unfortunately you only have to trust me. Така че ви всъщност трябва да се говорите. 
Okay, so we finish now with CPW4. And you see while it was very easy going with one to to three. The number four still takes it fine. But as I always say in the workshop, you have to be patient. Otherwise you lose. But in this case the patient is losing his patience. The most important thing is always to work without any pressure. And when you work without pressure, you immediately feel when the transformation is done. Okay, and now we're smoothing the surface of the trepanation canal, and that part is done. So now, where is my... So now we come to a very, very important part. When you do your first intralift procedure, you will always <coughs> have to place a collagenous sponge inside the trepanation just to prevent, if you forget, um, to go to mode 3 and to reduce the water flow to 30 milliliters. So I just cut. I cut a little piece of a collagenous sponge. And place it inside the trepanation. Okay. And this you always have to do without pressure. Because still there is the risk that you uh, make a perforation of the 
Sinus membrane. Now, you have to believe me that I switch to program D3 on the piezotome. And it was already it was already switched to a natrium uh, a, a sodium saline solution rate of 30 milliliter per minute. So and now this is the main thing of the whole interleaf procedure. I have this little trumpet with the hole at the end. And the water that is flowing through this trumpet is activated by ultrasonic, uh, ultrasonic waves. And it gives an oscillating uh, water column. And to show you how it works, I will activate it outside. Like this. It's like a fountain. So we place the trumpet right in the beginning. You can have the mirror again. We place the trumpet right at the beginning of the uh, trepanation. Because the trumpet must not, definitely not touch the membrane. And then we activate and start counting. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So next step, we take our synthetic bone graft. In this case, we take nanobone. We have 1.2 milliliter. We pour it in here. We prepare it with some sea line solution. Then we mix it with the autologous bone. With very, very little autologous bone. Okay, and then I have here an amalgamium syringe. And start to do the plugging of the material. So I insert it here and just press. And this, of course, now is a very time-consuming process. But when we started the entire, when we developed the entire method, we didn't have this one. And this procedure took half an hour, 45 minutes or so. I do not want to promise anything, but maybe in half a year we will give even a better solution than this one. Okay. Sometimes, just just a moment, please. 
sometimes when you start to feel that the resistance of the bone graft inserted is very high, which actually is the case now, we use the plug-in spray method. Plug because we insert the trumpet once again and then we activate it for about two or three seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, okay? And you see there is only very, very little loss of material. Okay? And the entire water comes out again, that means the sinus membrane is proof. So we proceed with plugging. Now we have approximately 0.6 milliliter inside. Boring, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now we have approximately 0 0.8 milliliters in. And uh, maybe we can make them a digital x-ray just to demonstrate how it looks. Okay, now we can again feel a little bit of plugging. So we do the plugging spray again. Okay, and once again you have seen the water comes back. And as long as the water comes back, the sinus is proof. And since we know that our patient is very sensible with his vagal nerve, we 
if the sinus would not be proof, in this position the water would run down the throat, and our patient would immediately start and you can ask him if he felt anything running down the throat now. No. Perfect. But even if the patient tells you, yes, I felt a little bit, it doesn't matter. Because maybe it's only a puncture. But then I would propose to do immediately a control x-ray. So now we are done with the bone and if we are lucky we can make now a control x-ray. So I'll try to get the x-ray exactly rectangular, but I can promise if I succeed because it's not mine. Okay. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, you again, you have to be, simply believe me because what I can see on the x-ray here is really a big half ball, approximately, yep. За съжаление, сега отново трябва да вярвате за това, което виждаме на регенографията. Ние виждаме една голяма полукръгла сянка. Approximately 8 mm high. С около 8 mm височина. And in this case it is also sufficient for the last implant that we are going to uh, put now. И също така е достатъчна височина, за да може в мястото, където ще поставим последния имплант. So once again it's the typical pleasure dome intralift. Pleasure dome. Отново това е типичното кубено удоволствието, получено в резултат на интерлифта. Because it looks like a dome. Защото прилича на кубе. Start with the last. Започваме с последния отвъзни план. And of course with the first. И да стигаме с първия. And we already proceed to the final drilling. Miss Eugene Baer, see you later. Could you see me here? And two, 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 two. So just to be sure that we will have also sufficient height, we already know, but uh, it's better to do it. We put some of the bone graft also here. And this is one very, very important point. If you put four implants and you really have a very big augmentation, of course you can proceed also in a second region with the intralift. So normally you always start in region number six. So you make the main augmentation in this place. But when you drill the holes for the other implants, you can also plug and spray in these places. And 
the implants are delivered in boxes like this. You see here Q2 diameter 4 millimeter, length 12 millimeters. You attach the key here on top of the implant. And then you screw it out of the container. This is how it looks like. And then, just by hand, we start to insert it. It has a self-tapping screw. And gives a terribly good primary stability. And as soon as you are very experienced with this implant system, you know that we will have a very good primary stability. But definitely not enough for immediate loading. So the Q implant system, the length is counted where the threads end. And there is a polished part. This is another two millimeters. And since I'm uh, influenced by German implantologists, I want the implant to be flat inside the bone. So actually this is a 14 millimeter implant. The Q system is very, very reliable. It's a real implant system for all situations. Because you have a single stage implant, which is the Q1. You have a two-stage implant, which is the Q2 that we are applying right now. And we have the Q3 implant system, which is actually also a single-stage implant, which is exclusively meant to carry uh, prosthesis. That means after surgery, there is a little metal pole uh, showing out of the gingiva. And inside the removable prosthesis, a matrix is polymerized. Uh, giving hold to a partial or full uh, uh, total prosthesis. The rest is usual business. Of course, now we could discuss if the two last implants are not put a little bit close to each other. You are right. But since chewing forces are highest in the molar region, I like to have the implants always in the region with the highest loading. Okay, and now this is the final result. So you see, the minimum distance between these two implants is 4 millimeters. So this is absolutely sufficient. Of course, this is not an implant insertion 
I would present on an international congress. But honestly speaking, it doesn't matter because they will work. And the main law will always be in the Molar region. So it's better to have the implants here instead of the same situation up here. The only thing is I could have centered them a little bit better. Okay, and since we are finished now, we start the wound closure by suturing. Uh, what you take a suture is also only personal taste. Most of the time I take six, uh, 5-0 or 6-0 resolvable sutures. But sometimes I take also 3-0. Like we do right now. So the needle is a little bit big, but it will work. And they always start at the corners of an incision. Just to be sure that the flap is replaced exactly where it should be. In this case, we have a 3-0 silk suture. And if any possible, I try to cut the uh, ends of the thread very short. To give, the, to give the patient a better comfort post-surgically. Needle gives me a little bit of hard time. Because normally it doesn't look so clumsy when I'm making sutures. But there is a half true proverb saying a good surgeon can work with everything. This is true, hardly, but I couldn't do surgery without the kids at home anymore. Because once you were driving a Rolls Royce, you won't drive a Volkswagen anymore. Take until now. Until now. 
much one hour. Good. So unfortunately, I can tell you now that this procedure was also a quick one. But since I promised myself to always tell the truth, it could also have lasted half an hour longer or even three quarters of an hour longer. Because sometimes you are facing problems that you cannot foresee. But the principal procedure of doing the intralift took us half an hour. And the patient will have tomorrow only very little swelling. We should not promise too much our patients. Because nothing is 100% in medicine. And any doctor that promises 100% is already a liar. So, I always try to make the patient understand what the probabilities are that a surgical procedure will be successful. And generally in implantology, the less you have to do bone management, the more success you will have. Now, one last word to the amount of local anesthetic we applied in this case. Uh, Bacali, we applied 3 milliliters. And on the balance side, 1 milliliter. And as you see that the patient starts to, to relax a little bit, this was sufficient for the entire procedure. Okay. So now to come to an end, we will do a one last suture and then we will do the control x-ray. Um, Post-surgically, it is very important to do an antibiotic shielding of the patient. Uh, we always use uh, clindamycin, 300 milligrams. 300 mi uh, milligrams uh, three times per day. And of course, in case the patient need, need, needs it, we give um, an analgetic with tex ibuprofen. Uh, 500 milligram, also three times per day, if he needs it. Another very important issue is that you prescribe in any case. Hydrogen peroxide 3% and advise the patient to rinse two times a day the surgery area. Because of course, because of course the patient can clean his teeth here and here but here he cannot clean with the brush. And so instead of using disinfectants that kill the good bacteria also, 
we use the natural principle of killing bad bacteria with oxygen. Ние използваме естественият принцип на убиване на лошите бактерии с кислород. So the patient should rinse for two weeks, two times a day with hydrogen peroxide. И така пациентът трябва да жабури двукратно, двукратно на ден за две седмици с 3% кислородна вода. And believe me, for this he will also look angry at you. И повярвайте ми, заради тази прескрипция той също ще бъде ядосан. Because it doesn't taste good. Защото кислородната вода няма хубав вкус. Okay, so make, let's make a last x-ray. Нека да направим последната снимка. I hope I can make it right. Надявам се, че мога да направя правилно. Okay, okay. Okay, we are done. И така ние сме готови. I thank you very very much for your attention. Maybe we can go through here. Here you can see Благодаря ви за вниманието. Ако this може is the, this is the floor of the maxilla. Ако може тук да видите само на тази снимка, това е пода на осмата кухина. And here you have the lifting area. А тук е зоната на лифтинга. And if we take this one, you can see it here. But unfortunately it's over projected. You can see here here we he's, he, here we stuffed uh, in the back part, here we stuffed in the front part. Тук ние натъпкахме, а ние тук натъпкахме костозаместител в по задната зона на поставена импланта, тук в област по предната зона. And in the first implant of course we didn't need uh, the intralift at all. А при първия имплант още не сме имали нужда от интралифт. I'm pretty sure that you're not going to see this, but you can see here again the pleasure dome. Почти съм сигурен, че това няма да успеете да го видите в залата, но съм тук може да видите също така кубето на удоволствието. But since we did a second stuffing of material in the back hole, и тъй като направихме повтор за втори път направихме натъпване в по-задната дупка за импланта. You see here a slight line. Вие виждате тук една съвсем лека линия. And here we have to estimate the second dome. И в тази зона най-вероятно може да видиме и второто кубе на задоволството. Because you always have to think that when we insert the implant, we say, uh, we still distribute the bone material to the side and to the top. Защото трябва да имате предвид, че при самото въвеждане на импланта по същия също така ние uh, разпределяме костни тъкани както на страни така и нагоре към синусната кухина. Maybe you can see it here is the first pleasure dome. Ако може да го видите, това е тук първото. Кубера starts the second. И тук започва второто. But to get all the implants on one x-ray it's not exactly uh, 90 degrees. Но за да успеем да вземем всички uh, да снимаме всички импланти на една ремонография тя не е точно направена по тъгъл 90 градуса. So next time I come we will do a, a, a computer tomography and whoever is interested in this procedure or what came up with this uh, I will send uh, a picture of the, uh, of, the, of the computer tomography to the, um, um, to the colleague who is interested. И така следващия път, когато дойде, ние ще направим отново компютърна томография на пациента и всички, които имат интерес от тази процедура, ще могат да получат за снимка с крайния резултат. So, and first of all I want to thank my excellent assistants and when you are missing one of the best dental doctors in Bulgaria, you will find her in Vienna. <laughs> Също така искам да благодаря на моята прекрасна дентална асистентка, така че да знаете, когато ви липсва една от най-добрите докторки в България, тя сигурно е във Виена. I thank you for your attention. Благодаря. I hope everything was to be seen very good. And you see it's very unspectacular, but it's fast, it's reliable and it's very positive for the patient. So thank you for your attention and we'll see you tonight at the dinner. Благодаря ви за вниманието. Както видяхте, това не е нещо грандиозно, което на на пръв поглед, но е много много лесна техника.